Starting to get exciting now that I've got the chassis all packed together. My next job is to install a fitting in the driver's cockpit. Pedals, the steering wheel. I've already installed the gear shift linkage. I'll just tack it in place there, but I think that's where it's going to work. Nice and close to the steering wheel without fouling it. But the key job I've got to do is to fit the steering wheel. I've designed the cockpit around uh, the factory uh, steering wheel and its shaft, but I've got issues that I have to address between the steering wheel and the firewall and the rack and pinion itself. And I've got to do it carefully because I've got to get this right. When you're building a centre seat race car and you're using a rack and pinion out of a normal road car, it's either going to have the pinion gear offset to the left or the right, depending on which country you're in. This is a right-hand drive rack and pinion. And the pinion gear is offset here. But the problem is not just that the pinion is offset. It's the angle of this shaft, which is going this way, which out towards where the shaft was and where the driver was sitting over here. Now, the driver is sitting here. So the shaft is going away from the driver, and now it's got to go back to it. And I've got to get a linkage that will do that. You can't just attach everything here because that angle is too tight and it will bind. So I've got to make an adjustment and uh, changes to the linkage from the rack and pinion to the steering wheel. You can buy, yes, you can buy centre mounted uh, rack and pinions with the uh, pinion in the middle, especially designed for race cars. They're fairly expensive. I have seen a homemade off-road buggy where the guy brought this shaft out and had a parallel shaft and then over here he had his the shaft from the rack and pinion he put two bicycle gears on either shaft and put a bicycle chain between the two I was surprised because I respected this guy as a bit of an engineer and when I saw this I thought my god there was no tensioner on the train and if that chain uh, came off or snap, he completely lose speed, uh, all steering. That idea I'm staying right away from. I have to design a linkage that's going to go from the rack and pinion here up to the steering shaft. But the trick is I haven't got much room to do it. I can't just join that straight across there because of the angles. I have to put in a a secondary shaft here and uh, mount that on bearings and then go across up there to uh, the steering shaft and you can see where my finger is that's the angle that I need to go at and the shafts down here so what I have to do is I have to significantly shorten this part of the steering column whilst not making it so short that I haven't got stability when I mount it I'm going to have to add in an extra shaft into the uh, steering column like I did with my off-road mid-engine buggy. I didn't have to shorten any shafts here because I had plenty of room between them where the rack goes there and up at the steering wheel. But I did have to allow for the offset uh, pinion. You can see that the shaft comes down there, goes across to the side, and then I've added in an extra shaft with a steadying bearing to hold things in place and I'm going to have to do the same sort of thing again. To be able to shorten this I've got to take it apart and to be able to take it apart and put it back together again after I've shortened it I need to really work out how this thing functions where all the various parts are. I've got this section up the top here which is the up and down swivel section and then I've got a bearing there and there and this long shaft coming out there and I need to shorten that. I'd like to bring that uni joint back to about here and take about 
150 mil out of the length of this. That'll still give me enough uh, strength in the mounting so that the steering wheel won't wobble and that shaft will be securely anchored. I want to cut the steering column in here somewhere and to shorten it and I've got to put a sleeve over it. I've checked the housing and the pipe that I need for the sleeve clears which is good. How much I can shorten this depends on how much I can shorten the shroud because that bearing has to go back to that point. So that's about two and a bit inches, about 50, 55 mil. So I'll cut this first and join it, and then I'll cut this and join it. I've also discovered that this bearing comes off the shaft. Like so, which is good because it means I can have that nylon away from the heat of the welding when I'm uh, rejoining this. to the subframe by two very large bolts there and there but it's not enough to mount it securely. A hell of a lot of energy comes back through the front wheels and up the tie rod end and hits the rack and pinion and if this top bracket moves at all my steering will do that. So I'm not just going to rely on the two big bolts on the bottom I'm going to brace the top of this framing back to my space frame chassis to make sure that this is absolutely rigid and cannot move. To brace this old 
firewall bracket from the donor car, I've added this cross tube. But instead of just tying it back to the space frame chassis with a couple of bars, instead I've bent up this heavy duty aluminium shelf and I'm going to tie that to a crossbar that I've welded into the framing of the front firewall. Besides being racing for the top of the rack and pinion, this shelf will also provide the ideal place on which to mount my 10 litre fuel tank in front of the firewall. So it'll do two jobs. I knew when I first started thinking about designing the geometry of my steering shaft and its linkages from the steering wheel to the rack and pinion that I'd probably need to put in an extra universal joint. So I went looking online and I found these which are a double uh, steering column universal joint with screws to lock it all together and so forth. And I thought maybe this will... Um, avoid me having to put in an extra joint and a, a retaining bearing um, because it, it, would, it might take up the, that sharp angle from the uh, top of the steering uh, rack back across towards where the driver is now sitting. So that was not the case. <laughs> uh, it wasn't much better than a standard joint, but now I've got it, I'm going to incorporate it anyway. Top of the steering column I've got mounted and you can see from the shortening work that I've done uh, on the shaft and on the end of it that was sticking out that I've moved this universal joint which used to be here right back to here. That's as far back as I can take it. I want to support the extra shaft and steering universal joint that I'm putting in with a bearing and I wanted to get a pillow block foot mount but I couldn't get one small enough at the large bearing shop that I went to to fit this shaft. So instead, I had to just go for a standard bearing, which goes on like so. And then as far as the housing is concerned, I just got some roll cage tubing, drilled two holes in it. That'll hold the bearing, and then I'll just, where those holes are, I'll just fit nuts to have uh, pinch pins there. I also needed to get a bearing for this universal joint to go on here, and as it turned out, there was no bearing available for this size shaft. It's just an odd one, so I'm going to have to cut this off and replace it with a shaft of the diameter that fits those bearings that I got at the bearing shop. And then what I'll do is when I've got my housings made, then I'll be able to um, make a mount and weld that on the side and that will hold the bearing housing in place. <laughs> 